Back in the year 604, the nutritional council was invented to lie to us, but thankfully for you, Vegetable Conspiracies is on the scene. So I figured today we talk about some nutritional myths. In my opinion, they're myths. They could be real as shit and I'm the one that's wrong. That's the most likely scenario. So do yourself a favor, take nothing serious here. Do not write anything down today. So the first myth I wanna talk about is fiber helps you poo myth. I tell you, the more fiber I eat personally, I can't, it backs me up. I don't know what it is. If it like holds on to too much water and swells up in my body and won't move through it gracefully, like your colon's that wide if it was a foot. Why are you stuffing giant things through there? I don't like the math on this situation here. Ow. It's like when black people have sex. I remember when I was taking my self-employment course and I was talking with the people in the class and there was this one lady who was all into health and she couldn't eat kale. She had been to the emergency room a couple times because of kale. Something about kale, the fiber just swelled up and she was like, nope, that's not gonna come through me ever. We have an emergency situation here. Like she had to go and they, I don't know what they did. What could a doctor even do? But they got it out. Point is, if you're seeking medical attention, which you should for the laughs, they're gonna tell you, oh, more fiber, eat more whole grains and beans, the most harsh fiber on the planet. Like so many people just bleed because of grains. Vegan gains is one of them. His ass blood is from oatmeal. I tried to help him, he won't listen. If you're constipated, you're dehydrated. You don't need more fiber soaking up the little amounts of water in your body. Just from what I've seen. And I'm not saying fiber always, it's a mysterious, mystical event. Where like, if you're eating high carb, fiber's fine. You'll just poo a lot more. It won't be giant poos, but it'll just be voluminous. Like, you'll have to quit your second job to do this full time. But if you plan to eat fatty foods, at least in my body, I don't know, maybe you're different, but fat and fiber do not mix. And so most people are gonna eat meat and they're gonna eat nuts and seeds and nut butter and almond butter on toast and whatever. If that's your life, just a balanced whatever, let's go out for sushi and dinner. And if that's your life, not so much fiber, just back down on it. That's not gonna help you. Bran, all bran cereal, it's like screwdrivers, just poking holes. I just made a video on constipation if you want my tips on how to alleviate it. And the answer is not fiber, trust me. Second myth is that salt is bad for you. Kind of ties in with the first one, constipation wise with the fiber. The more salt I eat, the better I feel, the better I poo. Salt draws water into the colon. You want fluffy poo? Have salt. You want to remove it? Be prepared to push out pebbles. Now, especially if you're on a keto diet, I tried to go low salt for a little bit, just adding a little quarter teaspoon of Herba Mare. It was like 300 grams of sodium. I felt okay, but now I'm on another level of energy and hydration and poo wise. Fun factor down there. I just, I was watching a bunch of lectures, Stephen Finney, Stefan. He says like five grams of salt a day. I'm still nowhere near it. I'm drinking. How's the autofocus? Oh God. Oh, what the hell is happening? Why did you do that to me, Cannon? Here's a little fun factor. Have two cups of water with half a teaspoon of Herbamare. Make sure it's the good one. There's two kinds. The original, this is the good one. It has no additives or anything. They have another flavor next to it and it has like preservatives and shit. What kind of shit is that? It's salty, it's almost like a vegetable soup. I'm fasting 23 hours a day here. Vegetable soup in my life. There was a study he was talking about where five grams of sodium a day was the sweet spot for mortality. I don't know, I didn't read the study. People always present studies like, oh, this is what happened, then we just lap it up like, oh, wow, okay, here's five grams. We're morons, we're sheep morons. It could have been just something completely irrelevant, but there is some evidence to suggest that a good amount of salt is what we want. And you know your grandfather had bacon and eggs every day and he's 97. 
Salt is an electrolyte, it electrifies the body. You can feel the energy from it. Like that whole light bulb in the water thing experiment. Without salt, it doesn't light with the electrode. And then you add salt and it's like, oh, there's the life force. So we're like that, we're light bulbs. I've heard that the salt and high blood pressure connection is false. It's a myth, but it could be real. I don't know. Go see your doctor. Just go play tennis with your doctor and you'll find out. The third myth might not even be a myth, but it's a little fishy. People tell you eight glasses of water a day. Do we have to do that? All I know is hydration is more importantly about electrolyte. Why did I move away? I flustered myself. I just wanted to test the camera's autofocus capabilities. Hydration is all about electrolytes. The more plain water you drink, the more you pee it out. You pee out your sodium, your potassium. So it's all about the electrolyte. But when I counted, I wake up, I drink one of these plain. My second cup is with the Herbamer. I usually have a bit more water, maybe this amount before dinner. And then I make a big like three cup thing with lemon and apple cider vinegar and camu camu berry powder for the just digestive abilities. And then before bed, a little bit more water, just a couple sips. I'm probably at about eight cups perfectly. So we might need that. There is equations out there like, oh, you weigh this much, you get that much water. I just think the electrolytes are more important. So don't just drink plain water, especially not distilled, but do get some in there. If you could replace it with vegetable juice, it doesn't make you poo and fart weird and go for it. The fourth myth, saturated fat and cholesterol kill you. I just, I'm not seeing it. We make cholesterol. You do realize that. Like, what do you think happens? Oh, I'm making cholesterol and it's poisoning me. Oh, stop making it then. Stop making it, buddy. We need cholesterol. It's so important for every cell. Every cell in your body has cholesterol in it. Like it's a foundational factor in our lives. We build hormones off it. It protects, it soothes inflammation. Like we need it in abundance. And your body can make some. Sure, you can get enough as a vegan, maybe. But if you can get it in your diet as well, it's like extra healing anti-inflammation factors, more hormone abilities, possibly. What if I was over here? There we are, there we are. So it seems like saturated and fat are good now. We burn saturated fat for fuel. It's like the best cleanest burning energy ever and it doesn't go rancid. You burn those polyunsaturated fats, you wanna drink flax oil. That's already rancid. Then it goes rancid in your body, then your face gets weird. I'm not a huge fan of polyunsaturated nerd fats oxidizing your face. It's not right. It ain't right. And the fact that mother's milk has lots of saturated fat and cholesterol, like how nature designed milk to kill your baby? Like you can handle that for the first two to four years. Some seven year olds are still sucking that tit. That's weird, kid. You're seven move on but like what goes through the heads of vegans okay babies uh, okay they have to drink that poison for the first four years and then you can detox from all the cholesterol now you you'll be good just go on a lemon cleanse spirulina lemon hippie cleanse you can do it so i think it's fine i haven't looked enough deep into the research but you can't trust the research it's based on like the oatmeal foundation oh we can lower cholesterol therefore it's good a lot of these studies they're just like, oh, this is a beneficial food because it lowers cholesterol, when that might not even be a good thing, it might be detrimental. So studies suck. Another myth is that glucose is our preferred fuel. I don't think it is. We are unique. We're the only primates. I've heard this. I could be wrong. They could be wrong. And now I'm repeating wrongness. We're the on only primates that can burn ketones for fuel instead of glucose. Every other primate is searching for sugar constantly. They're gorillas eating leaves all day, monkeys swinging in trees looking for figs. We're the only ones that can just fast and invent, create art. It's a huge advantage to be able to burn fat and go hours without 
I tell you, one meal a day, I should make a video on this. I've never talked about it. But I love being able to go hours and hours all day long without food. I went to the beaches the other day, if y'all saw that video, that was so relaxing. You better have watched it. I didn't eat the whole day. I came back, I worked out, and then I ate. That is life. What freedom. Who wants to be a slave? So the myth was that we run on sugar, we need sugar all the time, and that whole food sugar is better than refined. It is, but I still get reactions to regular. I've tested the blood tests, blood sugar tests. My spiked up sugar spiked <laughs> with grapes. Whole grapes. I just ate a meal of grapes. It spiked up to like 11, 10.7. It was freaky high diabetic levels. I just never felt right on sugar. I feel so much better on fat. Sugar keeps you perpetually hungry. It has to. Once you get a bit of sugar, we burn it quick. And then your brain is just searching for more. Whereas when you burn fat and you go without food, you have belly fat. You have just fat everywhere. It's like you have tens of thousands of calories weeks worth where's the panic there is no panic you have so much food so you can just go and do it i'll eat later and then i refuel every day and my body's like all right we got that meal every day we know it's coming i love this if you have any health issues it's likely that sugar is causing it if you need an afternoon nap it's because your sugar the cortisol rhythms are whacked going to high fat everything is just smooth you have the same energy all the time Whereas on these high carb meals, sometimes it would knock me right out to sleep. The 11 banana smoothie and I'm done. Like it killed me. You win bananas. What kind of life is that? If you ever got tired after lunch, it's because of the carb swing. Tired up here. Normal down here. Hangry over here. Back to normal. All these hangry freaks. People get so angry because their blood sugar is crashing. Like I need something. I'll kill you to get it. I start cooking at 3.30 p.m. and then usually I'm editing a video while I'm doing that and it's like I'm not even hungry. It's like I'm looking forward to my meal but easy street. Whereas on the carbs it was always like I'd go for a bike ride, refuel on the way, and come back and it's like okay eat some more fruit and always thinking about food. Carbs are bullshit. The last myth and I don't know what the recommendations are now they keep changing it whoever they are that like 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day for everybody, that's the key. Prevents cancer, super healthy fruits and vegetables all the way. Okay, that overheat warning is flashing now. 26 minutes of recording, but this is probably like 12 minutes. I've been monkeying around a lot. So, okay. Oh, uh, so here's the deal. I do believe I healed a bunch of stuff on the fruit-based diet and it was beneficial, but like my teeth started rotting like bad things happen. I always got that blood sugar swing. The acne was real. I don't think it's good. Sugar is the problem. And especially when you know what I just said, sugar triggers hunger. How is fruit a good snack? You eat a little bit of fruit, you're going to be hungry again, looking for sugar all the time. That's not the snack. You shouldn't be snacking at all. Snack on your belly fat, you hippo. I'm just not sold on sweet fruits being healthy for most people. We're damaged. We ate too much fast food. We can't control insulin properly. It just doesn't seem to heal on this high carb, low fat, all low. Fat is the cause of diabetes. Sugar's fine. And it never worked out in my body. I was low fat as heck. And I still got those swings. That warning light has me flustered. All I can think about is when's it gonna shut off? In my opinion, vegetables are healthy, but there's a limit. Just in my body, we talked about it, the fiber. You can go overboard. I used to make these giant potato meals. It's like five pounds of potatoes and then a good pound and a half of broccoli. It was so much. I was constipated and if I wasn't, I was pooing five times a day. It was way too much. You're giving your body way too much to do. It just wants to relax and heal things. If you give it all this food to digest, it's like, my God, you should see my meals. Even though I eat a decent amount of broccoli, it's not a big bunch of volume. My digestion feels good. This is coming from someone who had ulcerative colitis, like just sensitive corners everywhere. And like things are good and it's just a small meal. Even though I'm eating like, I would say about a pound of vegetable matter a day. The 
broccoli, roasted, some tomato in there, avocado, those count, they're fruits. But they're low sugar fruits, olives, they have some fiber, but it's not a big volume. It's definitely not 10 servings a day. It's like three max. And we overheat it. Oh my God. So we did overheat and now we're in the lower quality 4K mode. Can you see a difference? Oh man, what kind of bullshit is that? What kind of bullshit? Why? That got dramatic in the view. Wow, that is fun. So fruits and vegetables are good, but the high sugar fruits, not a fan. And too much vegetable matter can be a problem digestibility wise. So I think I've rambled on enough. I just wanted to see if it would overheat. That's why the video dragged on a little. And it did. And now what? I'm in this loser mode. It's a bunch of bullshit. So I'm gonna leave. Thank you for thumbing up the video. It was so good. All the myths. Wow, it was so helpful. Now you're on the right path. Does this make you feel better about yourself? Does it help one of your family members? No, it doesn't, does it? It doesn't help anybody to thumb it down. The only reason you would do it is because you've kicked a bunny. So why would you do it? It's a cute bunny. It's like, oh, you take a picture. You don't kick it. So you've seen it. How many people are there that kicked bunnies? More than we thought, probably. Because you don't agree with my advice. I'm vegan. Huh? I eat mono meals. That's the best for that. You're a moron. <laughs> All right, we're done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for buying a vegetable conspiracy. Oh, for those, I should have advertised this, but our Patreon monthly Q&A video show. You can now sign up as an annual member. If you want, you save. 10%. If it's a dollar a month, that's 10 bucks a year to get 12 amazing videos. <laughs> it's a fun show. So sign up down below. Subscribe for more videos. I'll see you